Today I'm going to show you some classic off-camera flash photography setups that can give you great lighting using minimal gear. The main goal is to get our flash off our camera so we can put it on a light stand and place it in different positions around the subject. To get started, we're going to need a light stand, a swivel or umbrella adapter, an accessory shoe, and these are sometimes included with umbrella adapters, sometimes you have to buy them separately. And you just mount your flash unit to the accessory shoe like this. So you can see the accessory shoe on the top and I've also labeled the umbrella socket and the tilt handle on this umbrella adapter. You can adjust the height of the flash with the knobs on the light stand. And you can adjust the tilt of the flash with the swivel brackets tilt adjustment handle. If you're using your flash in TTL mode, you can trigger it with a dedicated TTL sync cord. In this case, I'm mounting the flash to the end of the sync cord and mounting the sync cord to the light stand. The other end of the cord is connected to the camera. You can also set up your flash as an optically triggered slave TTL unit. Trigger it with an optical signal from your camera using a special transmitter or use your camera's built-in flash as a TTL transmitter. Some flash units can also be used as TTL compatible radio triggers. Just remember that any TTL solution has to be compatible with your camera and flash for it to work properly. If you're using your flash and camera in manual mode, then you don't need to send any TTL signals. You just need your flash to fire when you press that shutter button. And to do this, you can use a basic sync cord, but I'd recommend radio triggering instead. An inexpensive transmitter receiver set can do the job using just about any flash. Connect one unit to the flash. This receiver can be secured directly to the light stand. And make sure that it's set to receiver mode. Set the other unit to transmitter mode and connect it to the camera. Also, make sure you're using a flash that allows you to manually adjust the flash power setting. If your flash is compatible with your radio trigger, in other words, if it's got a compatible built-in receiver, then you don't need to use an external receiver. So we've got our flash on our light stand. We can place and position it any way we'd like and the flash will fire when we press the shutter button. We can use the flash unmodified. We can bounce the flash. Or we can modify it with an umbrella. I'll take my first example photo with this off-camera single flash setup. You can use a softbox instead of an umbrella to cut down on light spill. An umbrella is going to give you lots of beautiful light, but a softbox will give you more control over where the light goes. You can set up another light and place it on the shadow side of the subject. Dial the light down, say about one half the power of the first light, and you've got a classic two light setup. Your first light is the key light or main light, and the second light can fill in the shadows and cut down on the contrast, and we call this the fill light. If you want to, you can add a third light to the mix. In this case, the flash is unmodified and placed high and to the rear of the subject. This light can serve as an accent light, hair light, or rim light. And this is a classic three-point lighting setup. You can add or subtract lights for different effects and I'll run through a few quick examples to show you what I mean. So there you go, off-camera flash photography can be very simple. All it takes is a little bit of practice. Now, if you want to get into the details of camera and flash settings, I've got several videos on that, and I'll include links to those videos in the description below.